Okay, so, let's talk about a cartoon I discovered when I was 10. About three wacky fast food characters and their crazy misadventures. You f***ing imbecile! Get back here! You cost me my one chance! I got f***ing diabetes and cancer because of you! Oh yeah, if you know, you know. I'm talking about Aqua Teen Hunger Force, baby. A show that, to those who are unfamiliar, might look like it was made for little kids, but under the surface was about as coarse, deprived, and, well, shameless as can be. Who did this to my freaking car? Before I get into it, of course I want to say thank you for watching, and special thank you to everyone who checked out my home movies video. Seriously, it's had the best start out of any video on my channel, got me up to 77 subscribers, and inspired me to revamp my whole channel and focus on these alternative commentaries. We're well on our way to 100 subs, and I need you to subscribe if you haven't. So please, like, share, sub, and shit. Now let's talk Aqua Teens. Number one in the hood, G. To understand how Aqua Teen Hunger Force stood out, I think it's important to first recognize the metaphorical cloth that it was cut from, and that's early 2000s Adult Swim. And I know you old heads remember, I'm talking shows like Space Ghost Coast to Coast, The Brack Show, and of course Sea Lab 2021. Now, I don't have a lot of time, so one of you is gonna be the lucky father. Sweet. These shows were crude, hilarious, and each had their own surrealistic edge. I couldn't get enough. Then one late night, I was watching Adult Swim with my brothers. We'd see commercials from these weird cartoon fast food characters before, but we didn't know there was a show. Until a few minutes later, when we were treated to season two's premiere of Super Bowl. Mm. Meatwad? Mm. Meatwad, you in here? Mm. Mm. You were gonna spoil your dinner, boy. I couldn't tell you what it was, but I fell in love with this show immediately. Why is a wad of meat eating a bag of Doritos? Wait, he wins Super Bowl tickets here? Is that box of fries supposed to be his dad? I kept wondering and I kept watching. And before long, laughing my f***ing ass off. You're trying to say that you love me, Tom. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's not put people on the spot here. Who are you taking to that freaking Super Bowl? Carl, you're fiddle. The characters and their voices alone were hilarious. But by the end, oh God, I couldn't believe what I was watching. Right. Now I got diabetes. Well, the game just started. Ooh, what a contest. 55 to 3 in the first quarter. Shut it off. But the tickets are right here, Miwa. I know, they don't even want them. They just sort of, you know, kind of pecked at us like a bunch of chicken. Because you went to a <laughs> farm, you Do you remember the last time you laughed so hard it made your face hurt? The kind of laugh you have to stop and catch your breath after? <laughs> <laughs> No other show from Adult Swim made me laugh this hard, and it was immediate. And little did I know, what I had just watched was created using nothing more than a few computer programs. The creators used Photoshop to make characters and static images, brought them into After Effects for animation, and then edited with Final Cut Pro. You tell me how this is gonna help you get a high-powered six-figure job. You think they asked Tom Cruise this stuff before he signs on his movies? Aqua Teen's whole cast stayed consistently simple as well. Every one of them, every episode. Its plotline was always unpredictable and yet it always worked. But how, how did this simple cartoon with a title that didn't even make any sense leave the legacy it did? What exactly made Aqua Teen Hunger Force stand out? Well, I think I know the answer to that and it comes down to three simple ingredients. Characters, premise, and music. It's a show that is so unpredictable moment to moment the one thing that stays consistent in this sea of madness is the characters and their personalities. I mean, after all, let's not forget where it started. Six beautiful words that would set the stage for Adult Swim as we know it. What happened to my freaking car? I know y'all have seen the memes, so let's start with Carl Brutaninadaluski. And yes, that is his last name. Trust me, I checked on Wikipedia. That's cute that you said that because you're a freaking idiot. Carl's the next door neighbor and stands out as the only consistent human character in the show. He remains just as angry, depraved, and foul-mouthed as he is from episode one all the way to the end. Isn't that clear? Isn't it clear that I'm gonna just completely f your ass up if you don't take three steps back? You know what? I made you a shirt too. Let's see, without the R part. <laughs> Get it? I made you a shirt. 
<laughs> Carl, more often than not, finds himself tormented by Meatwad and Master Shake, both of whom are actually my personal favorite characters in the series. Meatwad acts as the childlike, impressionable one, and Master Shake as the selfish asshole. Put all three of them together and, uh... <laughs> Meatwad, hit the switch. Okay, turn it off for a second, turn it off, let's just turn it off! Hey, 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 what was that noise? Huh? Uh, where is my white hatchback? Excuse me? And why are there skin marks there? Uh, I just got through mowing the lawn. If that's a crime. I freaking rented this thing this morning! Comedy gold, but what stands out most to me here is Meatwad and Shake's relationship. They remind me of a mischievous older brother, little brother type of duo. In other episodes, well, it's a little more raw. I already been laid before. I know how it works. This is for you and everyone on the internet. Come on in, lover. Oh, I'm just in here, you know. Wearing a mask and tickling myself with an ostrich feather. <laughs> ah. Your power's back on. Frylock, who is in fact not Meatwad's dad, stands out as the voice of reason. You just stay down here with your TV and f*** it then, okay? I mean, sh How else are you supposed to get your roommates to pay the utilities? Unless you want to go back there and dig up the septic tank you yourself. You flush the cable bill down the toilet. All the bills, Frylock, they're too expensive! When he's not keeping Shake's ass in line, Frylock does in fact act as a pseudo-father figure to Meatwad. Don't you be giving it to me in that sippy cup. I'm a dessert and I deserve an adult glass. Uh -oh. I don't think so. Now, if you know Frylock, you know at first he gives off a strong moral ethic, almost like a strict parent. But by the later seasons, we find he has none. And he isn't. Haven't you ever noticed how I like to wear this around occasionally and pretend like I've been bad? No, but I have now. Speaking of lack in morals, that brings me to the Moona Knights, Ignignoct and Ur. These two Atari sprites stand out as, let's just say, the chaotic ones. We just came from Christmas caroling out in the woods. Oh yeah, I heard about the woods on the news. Someone burned them down. I always loved the episodes with these guys, and apart from how hilarious they were, I always thought it was the coolest thing they used Atari sprites as the design. It allowed for such creative versatility. I hope you can see this because I'm doing it as hard as I can. Let your characters tell the story. This is a quote from Quentin Tarantino. I heard it in an interview some time back, and I don't hear me out. I do think in a show, even as crude as Aqua Teen Hunger Force, I think this wisdom is nailed down tact. Which brings me to our next ingredient here. Premise. Or lack thereof. We're detectives, remember? Remember I made the t-shirts? I went the t-shirt cannon, remember? I've been firing t-shirts all over the neighborhood to say we're detectives! Now we're gonna look like fools! Truth is, Aqua Teen's stories rarely made sense. The show was the characters. After all, who needs an MO when you got the reset button technique and you can make Shake die a bloody death? And then the next episode, old Shaky Boy's alive and well. Aqua Teen made heavy use of the reset button technique. I'm pretty sure every character died at least once in the series. Especially Carl, he got it the worst. And obviously, this is not some crazy newfound technique. Plenty of shows have used it and continue to. But I do think it made Aqua Teen stand out in that there never really is a consistent plot. It doesn't take itself seriously. There are no rules. F*** the audience. Uh, you know, up yours. Ah, oh, but not you guys though. You got the Neutron style in my book if you made it this far in the video. While the plotline never took itself seriously, I do know one thing. Creators Matt Maialero and Dave Willis definitely chose their guests with intent. Which brings me to our final ingredient, music. Andrew WK, Danzig, Zach Wild, Chicago, Mastodon, the list goes on. The amount of musical guests they've had either in the show or make music for it cannot be understated. And being that Matt and Dave were both musicians and big music fans, it should come as no surprise that they've managed to attract some pretty big names to Aqua Teen. With my personal favorite being when they had Unearthed do a song for the movie back in 07. We, we are the chosen. We, we are the Musical guests aside, I know one thing. Aqua Teen Hunger Force's theme song is f***ing legendary, and you're lying if you don't think so. I'm telling you, I think most casual watchers, even if you're not ultra-passionate fans, remember this song. My name is... Sula, the Mike Rula, the old you want a trick, I'll bring it to 
What an anthem, and it still holds up to this day. They used this theme for the first seven seasons, afterward experimenting with a few other intros, and they even had Flying Lotus do one, which I love. Yeah, I saw those guys in the Meadowlands with Brian Adams. That was a kick-ass show. What a kick-ass show it was. Honestly, guys, I wish I had something more fancy schmancy to tie this all together with, but I think the nerd sums it up pretty damn well. It left an impact on me that I think may have helped shape my sense of humor. And I know a lot of you watching this video feel that same way, just like I do. And that's why the show's stuck with us for so long. That's why these characters will continue to stand the test of time. It doesn't matter what you look like on the outside, whether you're white, black, or Sasquatch even. As long as you follow your dream, no matter how crazy or against the law it is. Except for Sasquatch. If you're Sasquatch, the rules are different. Words of wisdom, Meatwad, my man. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Next video's on TSSF, so get hyped! And I'll catch y'all later.